Thanks to everyone for tuning in to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. We pray that all of your July 4th celebrations will be safe and orderly. Now before we begin our Thursday night Bible study, uh, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, it is our prayer that you will speak to our hearts as we continue to discover what we are doing daily that is not in line with your written word. Help us to discover it and be open and transparent before you so that you can make us better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our focus verse starting uh, this week and continuing for a few weeks uh, to come will be 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, which reads, uh, For the preaching of uh, of the gospel to them which uh, perish is foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. Again, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18, uh, the King James Version says, for the preaching of the cross to them uh, that perish is foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. Now, the Living Bible version of that same verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, uh, reads this way. Paul says, I know very well how foolish it sounds to those who are lost when they hear that Jesus died to save them. But we who are saved recognize this message as the very power of God. Now, we spent several months studying from Mark chapter 7, verses 14 through 23. Uh, the main question uh, in those verses that we sought to answer was, uh, according to the Bible, what defiles us? And that question is not only a good question that should be answered by non-believers, but especially by believers. As stated in other lessons, uh, we are studying using the method of systematic theology, which is any study that answers the question, what does the whole Bible teach us today about any given topic? So we are going to God's word, the written word of God, uh, for our answers about ourselves and and, and, and why we do what we do, why we live the way that we live. Uh, far too often, we use part of the Bible to, that suits us personally, and, and we are known to allow Satan to beguile us into twisting the written word of God into saying what we wanted to say. We, we love hearing how good we are. We, we love uh, 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 seeing ourselves as being good, upstanding Christians when none of us are good in essence. All of us are at our best like filthy rags. And, and, and it, it takes God's word to reveal that to us about ourselves. We tend to shy away from what doesn't make us feel good or make us appear good in our own eyes or in the eyes of others. That attitude does not profit us at all. Isaiah chapter 48 verse 17 says, Thus saith the Lord, the re our Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. He says, I am the Lord your God. In other words, the one that created us, the one that sustains us on a daily basis. In him we live, move, and have our being. And then Isaiah goes on to say, the, uh, uh, the Lord God is the one who teaches us to profit, to live profitable and beneficial lives to ourselves, our families, to those around us, e even uh, uh, pro to be productive citizens in the in the community in which we live, to be uh, productive uh, citizens of the kingdom of God. He, he, he teaches us to profit. And then he said, who leads you in the way that you should go. 
I am the Lord thy God who teaches you to profit, who leads you in the way that you should go. Now, before I get too far, the night's lesson is uh, kind of bridge coming from last week's lesson was the foolishness, and we picks up there, and we continue on foolishness, and tonight we're dealing specifically with division in the church. That That's foolish. Division in the church that Jesus died to unite us with God and with one another, division just don't make sense. It's foolishness. But... We we'll, we'll continue. If we would allow the Holy Spirit to teach us the way of God, that teaching will surely profit us. Jesus said in John chapter ten, verse ten, uh, he says, "The thief comes not, but to steal, and to kill, and to destroy." I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Jesus wants us, he died so that we would be more than just walking around alive and, and existing. Too often God's people are existing in, and we're living beneath our means instead of living up to the potential that God created us to live up to. He created us to be examples to the the world to be a light to that has that, that 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 shines into the darkness of that we live among and so people can see themselves and can see uh, a better way of life he, he designed us to be salt that has not lost its ability to affect a change in the lives of those that we come in contact for the better so he says I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly we should not be uh, 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 settling for being the tail, but we should strive to be the head. We should not settle to just be the borrower, but we should strive to be the lenders. So often, we sell out cheap, just as Judas did uh, to betray Jesus when he sold Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. I must go all in with the notion that the preaching of the cross is foolishness to, and even to members of the body of Christ, when it's evident from our reaction, when it comes to division from uh, within the body of Christ, we act like it doesn't even exist or we don't even notice it. We profess a good game of faith. But when it comes to putting our faith into action, well, that's another thing. The message of the cross, which contrasts with the speech of human wisdom, and it has the cross as the central theme. The, the message of the cross has the cross and Jesus dying on the cross to save sinners from their sin, the penalty of our sins, the, the message of the cross has the cross as the central theme. And when people hear it, it produces opposite effects in those who are on the way to perdition or perishing from those who are on their way to glory who are being saved. We are, are headed in our studies now in a look at the results of our previous three months or so of studies. Surely you remember that from Mark chapter 7, verse uh, 14 through 23, and I'll just read uh, for a reminder for us, verse 21 through 23. Mark chapter 7, verse 21 through 23 says, For from within, out of the heart of man, comes evil thoughts. And here's some of the evil thoughts. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride. And last week we uh, did uh, foolishness. All of these things come from within. 
and they defile a person. While we fail to see how no good that we are, we are surely to fail to see how good God is. So therefore, recognizing the, the things that defiled us to teach us how no good we are puts us in line, makes us candidates to really recognize the goodness of God. The message of the cross is in essence a call to fellowship. Psalms 133 verse 1 says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Now, now I'm going to read uh, uh, 15 verses, I believe it is. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10 through 25 uh, to give us a clear picture of where we're going in the next uh, month or so. Verse 10 through uh, verse uh, 17 deals specifically with the division in the church. And it reads, verse 10 uh, of 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verse 10 reads, I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree and that there be no division among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. In other words, Paul is laying out the, 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 the things that we need to adhere to. He says, first of all, if you're going to cut down and cut out on division among you, you've got to learn to agree. And it has been said, sometimes you have to learn and accept agreeing to not agree. But agreeing is important because if you don't learn to agree, then you fail to, to adhere to God's uh, uh, admonition that we should not allow the sun to go down on our anger. If you can't find ways to agree, you're going to end up being angry at each other. And when you end up being angry at each other, you're sure to be divided. There is sure to be division among us. And instead of being united, having the same mind and the same judgment, we ought to have the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Verse 11 says, for it has been reported now. These things had been told Paul. He wasn't just talking about uh, something that wasn't true. Uh, you'd be surprised who's watching you and who's reporting on you, even though you don't know it. He says, for it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there is quarreling among you, my brothers. What I, what I mean is that each of you say, or, well, uh, each of you say, I'm of Paul. I fo I'm following Paul. Or I follow Apollos. Or I follow Cephas, or I follow Christ. In other words, everybody in the same body of Christ can't be following all of these different people. And we're going to make it plainer as we go. Verse 13 says, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one may say that you were baptized in my name. That's the key. I did, I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I don't know whether I baptized anyone else or not. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with words of eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. Now, verse 18 through uh, verse 25 uh, deals more specifically with Christ, the wisdom and power of God. 
Verse 18 says, For the word of the cross is folly or foolishness to those who are perishing, non-believers. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will throw. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribes? Where is the debaters of that age, this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For instance, or I'm, I'm sorry, for since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. It pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seeks wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and folly to the Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Now having mentioned the problem of defilement in the church, now Paul turns to the matter of division in the church. Division has always been a big problem among God's people. And almost every New Testament epistle deals with the, this topic or mentions it in one way or another. Even the 12 apostles did not always get along with each other. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 11, Paul asked his readers three important questions. And these three questions are the key to this paragraph. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 13, the question is asked, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verse 17, the English Standard Version says, For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with words of eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. So let's, let's look more in depth for a few minutes uh, uh, with the question, Is Christ divided? Is Christ divided? The verb has Christ being, in other words, the question ends up being a truthfully, uh, rightly divided or interpreted correctly. Has Christ been divided and different parts handed out to different people? Can't get any plainer than that, Paul. Has Christ been divided and different parts handed out to different people? That very idea is grotesque. And we should always reject any division among us concerning Christ. Paul did not preach one Christ and one apostle and another group. Peter. There is but one Savior and one gospel. L let's, let's take a look at uh, Galatians chapter 1 verses 6 through 9. Paul says, or the Bible, God's word says through his servant Paul, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you 
and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or angels from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one that we preach to you earlier, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, he's repeating it. If anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you've received, let him be accursed. How often did the Corinthians create this four-way division? How did they do that? How did they end up with this four-way division? Why were there quarrels or contentions among them? Why is there so much contention in the church, the body of Christ today? Division is rapid. Denom one denomination thinks that they are better than the other. Preachers are divided because we feel like we're saying it or, 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 or teaching it or preaching it better than others. And, and we don't even notice how much time we're spending on being divisive. I, I, I'm, I'm, di I'm, I'm, diver di uh, I'm getting off the, the message. I'm getting off script, and I know it. I realize that to, to start with. But, but do you ever think about the fact that does our... United States president realize the division that he's causing. And we are quick to talk about his divisiveness. When in the church, we are so divisive. One answer is that they were looking at the gospel from a philosophical point of view. Now, I just wanted to put that out there because that's where we're going to start up next week. I've taken up enough time this week. But the question that we'll start with next week, the Lord's will, is the possibility that the church then and now, are we looking at the gospel of Christ from a philo philosophical point of view? Chew on that uh, until we meet again next week. Uh, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, from tonight to next week, next Thursday night, we ask that you would expand our understanding of the connection of the things that defile us individually that leads us to division in the body of born-again believers. In the name of the one that died to save us, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Enjoy your Independence Day celebration and be safe and practice safe living as uh, we continue to deal with uh, COVID-19 show show COVID-19 is not showing any respect of of age or race or political affiliation it 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 shows no respect to religious denominations so why don't we learn a lesson from this dreadful pandemic? The lesson that God has all tried to teach us all along, that he has no respect of person. And with that, I'll see you next week.
Take care. Bye-bye.